Okay, perfect. Hi everyone, my name is Ray. So today uh, I'm gonna present our latest work on lifelong topological visual navigation. So every now and then we see news talking about how the robot revolution is coming and we're all going to live with robots, right? But these are old news and uh, honestly speaking, we still do not see many robots from day to day basis, uh, at least not in public places like our home, grocery stores, hospitals, or like other public spaces, right? So what's the blocker? So I believe one of the reasons why we don't have uh, the robot revolution yet is because we simply do not have a reliable visual navigation technology yet. And I think regardless of the application, the ability to navigate is uh, essential for robots. However, robots are still not able to reliably navigate using only visual sensors. And this is really unfortunate because this can reduce the cost of uh, robots by eliminating the use of uh, more expensive sensors, such as LIDARs, and, which, uh, and, and as a result, which will make them more accessible. And traditionally, if you look at the uh, existing navigation approaches, traditionally a robot must first be must first be piloted to collect information from the environment and build a, what's called a metric map, for example, using simultaneous localization and mapping approach. However, this, uh, this approach often requires heavy engineering and costly equipment such as LiDAR. And another limitation of the system is that specifying goal in metric space, such as point coordinate, is not intuitive. For example, if you, if you want your robot to go for to a particular location in your home, you don't want to, to input a X, Y coordinate to your robot, right? It's not intuitive. So ideally, we need a system where we can specify the goals in representation that we can easily comprehend, such as image. Uh, however, teaching a machine to uh, to understand an image is also an, a challenging problem by itself. So it seems like learning-based approach using deep and reinforcement learning is a good option to solve this, especially due to their strengths in handling image input. Well, there, uh, we see several attempts to do this, but they are typically hard to train, do not perform well on long distance navigation tasks because they are purely reactive. Given image input, you predict action, what uh, navigation control it should output. And it's not also safe to train this in the real world environment. And simply training these models in simulation does not work because they typically do not transfer well to the real world situation. So in this work, we're interested to in another type of map, not a metric map, but uh, another type, what's called a topological map. Here we represent a map as a graph where the nodes correspond to images of particular locations in an environment and the edges correspond to, uh, to traversability between the edges within the nodes. So our main contributions are threefold. So first, we propose a sampling-based algorithm to build a sparser graph while maintaining or even surpasses the navigation performance compared to the existing baselines. And second, while we can safely train our model in simulation, we show that we can uh, fine tune our model in a target domain efficiently with small amount of data. And finally, we propose a graph update procedure to improve lifelong navigation performance as our agent navigates through an environment. So our navigation framework consists of uh, graph building and navigation phases. During graph building phases, the robot collects sequences of observations the and from the environment and builds a topological graph from a previously learned model. And in the navigation phase, the agent is given a query uh, in the form of a target image, localizes itself on the graph and plans a path to reach the goal from the planned path. And then it picks a sub goal and predict what action to take in order to reach the sub goal and execute the action with the controller. The agent then localizes itself and update the graph as the, uh, using its latest observation. And this process uh, uh, then repeats until the agent reaches the final goal. To achieve all this, we train a single neural network model that predicts if a target image is reachable, which, will, which I will define in a second uh, from the start image and the relative post transformation between them. So what do I mean by reachability? So we define reachability based on the capability of our controller, which is a position-based feedback controller with a simple motion primitives, namely in-place rotation and forward motion. 
So this figure roughly illustrates the differences between reachable and non-reachable situations. So we define that in order for an image pair to be reachable, we require them to have a sufficient visual overlap, a clear direct path between the source and target image pose, and the distance between the image pose is small enough. So now that we understand the framework and what our model does, let's see how, our, uh, how we can actually build a topological graph using this model. So we first initialize the graph with a node randomly sampled from the trajectory images tau. And at each iteration, we sample a random node, ORAN, and then we use our model F to determine if ORAN can connect it or merge with any of the existing nodes in the graph. If the model determined that the new node can be connected but not merged, we add it to the graph and connect it accordingly, where we weigh the edge using the geodesic distance predicted by the model pulse estimator. Uh, if the model determines that it can be merged with any of the existing nodes, then we remove ORAN, so it won't be resampled again in the future iterations. So it's um, about efficiency. And if the answer is no to both of these questions, then we return back to tau uh, the trajectory images, and so that it can be resampled again in the future iterations. We then repeat this process until there's no more node in tau that can be added to the graph. Since we built the graph using a learn model, it's, uh, we think it's important to address the possibility of having spurious edges, which let us propose uh, proposing a method to update the graph. First, when traversing an edge, we can update both the connectivity and weight based on the success of traversal, which we model as a Bernoulli random variable. We can then compute the posterior using Bayesian update. When the agent fails to reach sub-goal, our method decreases the edge reachability score and further prune the edge if uh, the score falls below a certain threshold. And for the edge weight, we model each prior as a Gaussian. And only when the agent successfully traverses an edge, uh, we, then we, didn't, we didn't predict, uh, treated the prediction as a measurement and compute the posterior using Gaussian filter update. You also propose to add new nodes to the graph when observation is novel. So concretely, an observation considered novel when we fail to localize it on the graph. And uh, the second is that when we are unable to find a path during navigation, we iteratively sample from remaining trajectory nodes until a path is found. And then we, we then only keep the new nodes along the found path and return all the tentative nodes back to tau for future resampling. And note that when we add the new node, we loosen the graph building criteria to increase the chance of adding nodes around sharp terms, which usually is harder to add to the graph. So here's how it works. So we, when we are unable to find a path from start to goal, like in this picture, you keep sampling new nodes until a path is found. And then we only keep the nodes that are within the path and add them to the graph permanently. And finally, let's talk about how we can update the model. So to collect the fine tuning data set, we gather trajectory images from the, uh, with the, along with the associated post at the metry, uh, which is commonly available. Uh, and to determine reachability, we use the same criteria as when labeling data in simulation. Uh, however, since visual overlap and path length is not available in the real world, they, they, they are available in simulation, but not in the real world. We use a proxy criterion by checking if the temporal distance between image images in the trajectory are close. Um, and note that this is also favorable because usually post odometry can be noisy due to long-term drift, but because we, we require them to be temporally close, the, the drift should be minimal. And we evaluate the proposed method first in four different environments. And, and then uh, here are the images of the environments and the trajectories during collection phase in each environment. And to evaluate the performance, we pick images from major location in each environment and generate 500 random test episodes uh, to reach these targets. And here we report the success rate as well as the number of nodes and edges in the graph. And we can see that our method consistently yields higher performance uh, navigation success rates, especially after model fine tuning. And in addition, our graph has a significantly fewer number of nodes and edges, and which keeps planning costs practical when we scale to larger environments because our map is going to grow substantially.
and but with our methods we can make sure that the graph is still uh, manageable in size and we can also qualitatively see qualitatively see that our graph have the fewest number of nodes compared to the others while still maintain proper map coverage and we also can see that our graph have fewest false positive edges to walls and we now show the lifelong navigation component of our proposed method when we show that uh, when we are when we allow our agent to update the graph our uh, we can see the success rate generally improve as we perform more queries, while the number of nodes and edges in the graph do not substantially grow. And we also see uh, initial decrease in the number of edges, suggesting that our graph update successfully pruned spurious edges causing initial navigation failure, then, then later added useful uh, nodes. And qualitatively, we can also see fewer spurious edges when comparing sample graph before and after the update. Now, we uh, finally, we now show some demonstration of our agent navigating in both simulated and real world environments. So here's a sample episode from the simulation, and we can see how our agent was able to reach a target image that's located far away from the initial location efficiently. And here's another example episode from our lab at the University of Montreal, which uh, where we are able to see how our, our agent was able to navigate in a pretty cluttered real world environment through multiple twists and turns. But really what we want to emphasize the importance of performing graph updates. Here's an example of an episode uh, where the agent initially failed to reach, it's not playing. Ah, so yeah, here's an example of episode where the agent is unable to initially unable to reach the target, but after the graph updates, the agent finally was able to reach the target. So which 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 uh, which is why we want to reemphasize the importance of performing graph updates when building the graph. Oops. Yeah, and that finally that's the end of our presentation. So this project I can't can't be done without uh, uh, my collaborators Liam Paul and Angie Xu, and I also provide the link to my to the paper to the web page and the blog of this work. So thank you. <laughs>